Hello, I'm Gary. Hello, I'm Spiro. And I'm Paul, and we're from TVS Specialty Products. And in this video, we're going to demonstrate how a TVS3 can emulate the sounds of a Miazzi tape echo unit. We're fortunate this time in that we have a Miazzi PA306 owned by Spiro, so we can do a direct AB comparison. Yes, I bought, I bought it around about 2006 and uh, I was quite impressed with the way you can emulate the early shadow sounds and um, it gives you a starting sound and from there we developed the um, TVS3 due to your expertise. So we'll show you how you can set up the TVS3 using the patcher program so that you can emulate the Miazzi echo patterns and mm -hmm. head amplitudes and so on demonstrate it with some damp notes and then go on to show how the singing quality imparted by the Miazzi also comes out in the TVS3. In order to do a direct comparison between the Miazzi PA306 and the TVS3, we need to measure the echo delays and the echo amplitudes on the PA306 and then apply them to the TVS3 using the Patcher program. For this demonstration, we'll be using heads 2, 4 and 6 switched in on the Miazzi PA306. Here's a screenshot of a single plucked note played through the PA306. You can clearly see the initial note and then the three repeats corresponding to heads 2, 4 and 6 and then further sets of three repeats each due to the feedback being taken from head 6. Measurements show that the repeats occur at 121, 263 and 405 milliseconds. The second repeat is the loudest, with the third repeat being 2 dB below and the first repeat 7 dB below the second one. Here now is a screenshot of the TVS3 patcher program and it shows that we've used the five delay lines to set up repeats corresponding to the three delays, echo amplitudes and feedback of the heads of the Miazzi. With those parameters loaded into the TVS3, here is a comparison of the waveforms of that same single plucked note played through the PA306 top trace and the TVS3 on the bottom. Now for a comparison of the sound of the two units. First up, a fairly modest drive level, giving fairly clean echoes from both the Miazzi and the TVS3. First up, the Miazzi, and then the TVS3. And again a bit higher up, uh, as before, Miazzi first, then TVS3. However, one of the endearing characteristics of the Miazzi echo units, whether tape or drum based, is the way that when driven hard they add quite a bit of distortion and compression to the echoes, particularly on the lower register notes. As before, Miazzi first, then TVS3. It's particularly gratifying to note that not only is the sound reproduced very well, but the actual waveforms also show identical forms of distortion, the asymmetry in the initial note and the rapid decay of the distorted and compressed echoes. It took a lot of design and experimentation to get the TVS3 to match this aspect of the Miazzi echo units and is one of the characteristics of the TVS3 that distinguishes it from virtually all other modern echo units. However, as with our earlier demonstration of the TVS3 emulating the Vox Long Tom, these plucked demonstrations are just one small part of the total story and it's just as important as the singing quality that both of these echo units impart to tunes. So we now need to consider some excerpts from various compositions. First up, a tune recorded by the Shadows in early 1962 called Spring is Nearly Here. While the echo timings of the PA306 don't match those of the drum arts used on the original recording, 
the singing quality is quite apparent. To make this recording, I actually recorded the guitar dry and then fed that dry signal uh, into each of the two echo units to eliminate any effects of playing style. Here it is switching between those two takes, starting first with the Miazzi, then the TVS3, Miazzi, TVS3 and so on. to the lovely singing quality imparted by both of these echo units, there are two other features which stand out. One is the wavering nature of the sound, and this is imparted by the fairly high level of echo recombining with the dry signal, enhanced by the wow and flutter inherent in the tape unit and modelled in the TVS3. And the other feature is the fact that even though there is a high level of echo, the repeats following each note are fairly subtle and just about identical in both cases. Here are some short excerpts from these tracks giving a direct comparison. In each case the Miazzi PA306 first followed by the TVS3. <laughs> Even more telling is a direct comparison of the lead signals without the backing. First up again the Miazzi and then the TVS. Well, that was really um, that was really very impressive. I, I couldn't tell the difference, could you? No, I couldn't tell the difference. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, they're certainly extremely close, there's no doubt about that. And as I mentioned in the video, it's very gratifying that when driven hard, the TVS3 mm. still continues to emulate that lovely compressed and overdriven sound yeah. of the yeah. Miazzi, which yeah. is quite unique, I think. Yeah. The other interesting thing, of course, is having now done the long time and the Vox, We've also done our own comparisons with other echo units right. and it doesn't matter whether you're trying to emulate a Binson or a Roland or a Vox or a Long Tom, mm -hmm. the TVS3 keeps coming up trumps each time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if people wanted to do their, their own comparison, would they, would they get similar, similar results? They, they certainly should if they're fortunate enough to be able to do an AB comparison. Mm -hmm. There will of course be differences in the echo units, whether tape or drum, because mm. it depends upon mechanical wear, how bad mm. the way on flutter is, mm. 
how worn the heads are, what particular tape they're using, mm. components, ageing and tolerances and so on. Well, that's it. Um, yeah. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers. Bye-bye.